Super excited to chat with you gentlemen here uh, today at Health. Uh, I know you guys spoke on a panel the other day and wanted to focus on two things. We want to talk about, you know, really what you focused on in that panel uh, the other day, but also this relationship. So uh, we'll kick it over to you first. How did this relationship come to be? And then we'll kick it over to you to kind of hear what your point of view of that was. Yeah, when, uh, when we started Brightside Health, uh, we had a clear mission to build a platform that could deliver measurably better outcomes at scale for people suffering from mental illness um, and really to address a gap in the market that we saw as systemic dysfunction. Um, but as a startup, uh, of course, it's very hard to get attention and credibility with a payer. You know, certainly payers are old, conservative, complicated organizations, and as a tiny startup, you know, you're, you're really just a, a speck on the landscape. And so when we thought about, all right, how do we go build credibility here? Of course, healthcare runs on data and evidence. Uh, and of course, a lot of people out there are sort of talking about what they can do, but we wanted to show what we could do. We thought that would be the best way to get some attention and, and build a real partnership. Um, at the beginning, we were a cash pay model because that was the fastest way to start to get patients on our platform and be able to deliver care and get the data. What we saw, though, and heard from a lot of our members was that they had health insurance um, and that they were frustrated with the options through their network. And so they were willing to go pay cash even though they had insurance. Um, and so we started to collect that information and understand what the makeup was. Uh, and saw you know, a, a mix of people coming from every plan um, and, and obviously you know, representing this pervasive challenge. Uh, and of course, because of Cigna's scale and, and success, uh, we had a good mix of, of patients that had Cigna insurance. Um, so when we had 500 of them, we pulled out the data just for those individuals and analyzed it and found that we had really great access, really great treatment and outcomes, and really great feedback from those individuals. I wanted to go approach Cigna, and as a startup founder, I was really worried about um, being uh, stuck in a pilot for a long time. Uh, I've heard a lot of horror stories around that, and so wanted to figure out a way to approach them with a value proposition that their answer wouldn't be, great, let's do a pilot. Uh, and so in packaging up this data, I really imagined it like the report out from the pilot, and we had already done the pilot, um, even though they didn't know about it and they weren't really actively participating in the pilot. So I was aggressive, I knocked on some doors and we got some contacts, used some of our, our team and our advisors and uh, sent over this document and said, here are the results of the pilot you didn't know you were doing with us and said, we'd love to talk about it and how we can help more of your members. Uh, and fortunately, uh, got a great response and reception from Doug and the team over at, at Evernorth. And uh, it was the beginning of, of a great opportunity to collaborate and solve a lot of problems together. And, and Doug, what was, what was your team's point of view? Like, how did this process look like when that was initially, you know, you were initially approached to have this relationship, what did that look like? Yeah, so from our side, as a psychiatrist, and then my responsibility with the health plan is really to make sure that we give everybody access to high quality care for mental health and substance use issues. And too many people didn't have access. So we're always trying to figure out how do we get, expand access. We know up to 50% of people with mental health conditions don't get any care at all, or at least inadequate care if they get anything. So our focus is how do we find more providers, how do we expand access, and how do we make sure that it's quality and we're getting to those outcomes that, that are really desirable. With, especially then with the pandemic, it really accelerated this look at what's out there, innovative, digital, virtual, how, because that makes it easier from a convenient standpoint to, to provide care digitally. It's more private for people. And, uh, and while we had been paying for that and covering it prior to the pandemic, the pandemic really accelerated the utilization there. So we started really looking for who's out there um, coming up with innovative ways to deliver care, especially to get to um, difficult to treat populations. And, uh, and so in that process, when, when Brad approached us for, with Brightside, it really was, it was a match of, hey, this is a group that's out there. They're seeing patients, they're, they're scaled. They can measure and, and demonstrate that people are getting better uh, and, sh and want to partner and share that data with us as a payer, which makes it then easy for us to say to customers of ours and members who have insurance with us, trust Brightside, this is a good, uh, a good program for you and they're gonna be able to take care of you. And so, um, so after conversations and hearing their proposal, we, uh, we uh, decided to contract it and really go out and, and put it to work. And, and I, I think you, you said the magic word trust, 
right? And then that's not built overnight. Um, so it's it's great to see. It's it's also, by the way, so great to have you both here and be able to, to talk more about this. Uh, and, and you were on a panel the other day. We mentioned. Uh, talk me through what that was like. Uh, how was it being up there together and 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 really you know diving in? Well, it, I mean, it's it's a real privilege to be able to collaborate closely with Doug and his team. It was sort of what we dreamed about as a small startup and said, you know, that, that's really where we're trying to go is to be the best behavioral health partner to payers and help them solve the problems that they really see and care about within a member population. Uh, and so, you know, we've now gone from that initial 500 patients to having treated tens of thousands of, of Cigna and Evernorth members uh, and to continue that feedback cycle of sharing data, collaborating and finding ways that we can work together to make a real impact there. Um, so to be able to go and, and talk about it in an audience at Healthier where we have a lot of other great companies in this ecosystem trying to solve similar problems uh, and sharing ideas on, you know, not only what have we learned where we've come uh, and how far we've come, but what's next? And, and for us, that what's next is the part I'm most excited about, really breaking through the gridlock in this industry, using rigor, using outcome measurement to finally open up meaningful path towards value-based payment and, and the kinds of things we're working on together. And, and from your point of view, Doug? I, so I agree, agree with Brad. It really is fun to have a room full of people uh, interested in understanding what's happening in behavioral health and what, what's the future look like, sharing the data with each other, and then how are we now starting down this path towards, as Brad said, the future where we can start to come up with innovative ways to partner around that, which includes contracting differently and really, really focusing on what are those outcomes so that together we're gonna make it better for, the, for them as a provider, for the patients out there and, and everybody to end up getting to better outcomes. For us as a payer, ultimately better costs for our clients as well and better outcomes for their employees and the people who they're paying for insurance for. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you guys so much for, for joining us here today at Health and look forward to continuing the conversation with both of you.